Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, if I actually do go ahead and post it, uh, was about an hour, hour and a half of me working in the shop, chopping, uh, chopping out a housing dado for the backside uh, of the vise that mounts up against the, uh, the the end of my bench. Uh, I did not have enough battery here left to film the other chop, but I did. Go ahead and make that chop, and here it is <clears throat> in all of its glory. So it is fully functioning, it's all attached and everything. Now it's just, uh, and you can go ahead and see kind of how everything works. So I went ahead and put some, put a wax on all the screw parts and these guides and the uh, the, the uh, lead screw and everything but um, you can see in here I can't put any screws right here obviously but there's two screws that go through uh, through the back side of the vise into the end of the bench and <clears throat> those screws are are holding the entire thing up as well as the lag screws that go in from the bottom and then this I go on the back side of this I cut that dado and and uh, basically mount um, mount the the chop straight to the uh, straight to the bench and now basically I'm going to start and this is not, mounting this is just basically two screws right through the face, into the chop itself. Uh, pretty straightforward. Now I'm just going to clamp it down. As you can see, we still have, uh, I don't know, an eighth inch or so to, about an eighth inch or so to, uh, To, uh, shape right here so let's get to it I probably shouldn't put you on uh, put the camera on the uh, on the bench because then it starts shaking I didn't realize that until later hopefully it'll work just as well this way that's against the grain. Let's see. Yeah. That's not going to work. And we'll just see how this goes. That's not too bad. Tell you this, uh, this particular piece of red oak is kind of a odd piece. Um, I don't know what this is. Honestly, I've never dealt with it before, but it's you can see it pretty good there. It looks almost quilted, but it's not. Or some kind of figure, but it's like. I don't know, something, some irregularity in the wood. It's not on the other end, so, on the other edge, so I don't know. But it, uh, it definitely gives a really scratchy finish, the, which it's not, not a big deal, it's the top of a vice chop, but um, it's not really desirable. It looks good, just doesn't feel good. It doesn't plane very well either. This stuff's 
really, really hard. stuff's really nasty to playing with hand tools. See if I can get a little bit easier. It looks beautiful though. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's a little bit better, a little bit better with, with my smoothing plane just because the, the throat is closed up quite a bit more than my number six. I just want to make sure that I get it even between the bench and the, the vice chops. Okay. As close as we can. Which it's not going to be hard. We're getting close here, not close here, so I gotta start taking it off. This side, a little first. Playing like that actually works a little bit better. Before I get too far, I want to check <clears throat> make sure that I'm not going too low on the outside. Not that it matters because as you'll see in a second, so I'm still higher on the outside, but on the other vice top over there, I pretty much did a bevel, like a 45. This one, I think I'm gonna round. So I'm gonna round, <clears throat> I'm gonna round these corners uh, pretty good. Starting basically, the radius will start at the beginning of this chop, this uh, outside chop. And I'll radius it around. And I'll do this, uh, this this uh, front corner right here, and then I'll do the same thing on this side. Uh, I don't know if I'll, if I'll end up doing this or not, because that's going to transition into the rest of the bench, but we'll see. I may end up like tapering it out to the corner. We'll see how that pans out. But you'll see how quick this, uh, this plays out, if I can get it on camera. <clears throat> of course, this wood is really difficult to plane, so I don't know how fast it'll go.
close. Getting super close now, so I'll just lighten up on the plane a little bit. Not too light. I'm going to really light cut with this guy. This is just to make sure it's all joining to the top. Taking it off the far side. So gnarly. starting to get into my bench in that spot anyway. So as I come in, I'm basically just, I, I normally do this anyway, but it's just more paramount now to come in and lift up at the same time. That way, if I start coming into my bench, I'm not going in too far and it just kind of feathers it in. So close. Feels like I'm taking a lot of material, but I'm not.
All right, it's almost too close to tell even with the finger. That means I'm super duper close. So it's barely skimming the top there, except for right there. And there we go. All right, so now it's time for, now that we're good and even there, now it's time to round off these uh, edges here. I don't know how well this is really going to shoot, but what I'm going to do is get a five. So I've got two fives and I've got one set up with a heavier camber and almost acts like my scrub plane. I'm going to set it up with a super heavy cut. And we're going to start rounding it off. Now what I'm going to do I wish I had a better way to show this. Um, let's just see if this works. It is so rough against the grain. I don't know how well this is going to show. Let's see if I can try and set this on the window seal. There, that works. All right. So super heavy cut. I'm just cutting a 45. Try and keep it even. It's really just eyeballing it at this point. Really, it's just the shape that we're dealing with. I'm going to back it off a little bit. And we'll start taking that core, that top corner off. Watch your plane so you don't run into your rice. can't see exactly what it looks like but this is what it looks like so far all right I think I think that's good we can always go more later I'm going to take a little bit more off. I'm 
And I'll hit it with the smoother. Feels really good. All right. <clears throat> Next is going to be these sides. Basically, doing the same thing. Good in there. <clears throat> now it's just a matter of rounding it off. Try and do it without breaking out. This is a tough green. Doesn't want to work with me any angle I get. coming out, whether it lacks it or not. But it gives it a nice molding look right here. Seamless flow. Looks good. smoother. Not quite the uh, radius for that inside, but and to roll with the grain there as best I can.
Well, that turned out better than I thought on that end. We got one more to do. I think I might soften up that corner over here with some, some sandpaper or something. One bit. Seems to work all right there. It's enough trying with the uh, with the scraper. This is really weird ingrain. Not only ingrain, but it's it's also irregular grain. consistency here. And this is 150 grit that's been worn down a little bit.
Just taking that sharpness off of there. Got to clean up these edges because they're not flush with each other just yet, but will be shortly. And I didn't go quite as far as I wanted, as I originally planned on, but as you can see, it might be the best angle you can see it at. Looks like this side over here needs a little bit more, but... See a nice little profile right there on the end, and then shot down the rail. There's the other side. All right, not bad. A little more fine tuning. And uh, she'll be ready to go. Not bad, not bad. I didn't think I'd get this far with her today, but I did. Got her done. Another 10 minutes of tuning and clean up and call it a night. Friends and family, I love you. Everyone else, I'll see you later.